I'm going to be doing a question from the 2004 AP Calculus test. And in this question it says, consider the, given, or the curve given by x squared plus 4y squared equals 7 plus 3xy. And part A says for us to show that dy over dx is equal to 3y minus 2x all over 8y minus 3x. So for part A, I'm going to start by writing the original curve, which is x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 7 plus 3xy. <clears throat> so we're going to have to go ahead and find the derivative of this function using impl implicit differentiation. So this is just going to be 2x. And since there's a coefficient, we can just leave that and then find the derivative of this part. So that will be 2y dy dx is equal to zero because the derivative of a constant is always zero plus we're going to leave three out and just find the derivative of this using the product rule so x times dy dx plus the derivative of x which is one times y so now let's go ahead and simplify this function so we'll have two x plus 8y dy dx is equal to 3x dy dx plus 3y. So since we're solving for dy dx, we're going to want to move all of the dy dx terms onto one side and all of the terms without dy dx onto the other. So let's move dy dx to the left and the other ones to the right. So let's subtract 3 x dy dx from the right side and from the left side. So 8y dy and we'll also subtract 2x from both sides. So we'll get 3y minus 2x. So now we have it kind of balanced. So one side has the dy dx terms and the other side doesn't. So from here we can take a dy dx out of this side. So we have dy dx times 8y minus 3x is equal to 3y minus 2x. So if we divide both sides by 8y minus 3x, then we'll have solved for dy over dx. So we're going to do that next. And that is a derivative, which matches what they gave, so we completed part A. Okay, on to part B. So part B says, show that there is a point P with x coordinate 3. So let's write that down. So at P, x equals 3. At which the line tangent to the curve at P is horizontal. So that means that the slope is zero. So we'll put M equals zero. We need to find the Y coordinate of P. So to do so, we're gonna take the original function and plug three in for X and then solve for Y. So let's take three squared plus four Y squared equals seven plus three times 3 times y. So let's go ahead and solve for y. So this is 9 plus 4y squared equals 7 plus 9y. Let's move everything to one side. We end up with 4y squared minus 9y plus 2. And we can factor this. So we have 4y minus, and then we'll have y minus. So we can put 4y minus 1 and y minus 2. Oops, 2. Okay, so from there we can find the values of y. So this one will be y equals 1 fourth because we'll set this equal to 0 and find 1 fourth. And when we set that equal to 0, we get y equals 2. So now that we found the two y values, we need to plug 
these back into the derivative function to see if they actually do equal zero for the slope, which we have here. So we're going to go ahead and plug this one in, and we'll do that right here. So the derivative function was 3y minus 2x, so 3 times 2 minus 2 times 3, because x is 3, all over <clears throat> 8 times y, so 8 times 2, minus 3 times x, so 3 times 3. And this is going to be 6 minus 6 over 16 minus 9, which is going to give us 0. So this one works. And so now we need to go ahead and see if when y equals 1 fourth, if we also get a slope of 0. So let's plug this in to the derivative function to see if the slope of the tangent line is 0. So 3 times y, which is 1 fourth, minus 2 times x, which is 3, <coughs> all over 8 times y, so 8 times 1 fourth, all minus 3 times x, which is 3, and that will give us 0.75 minus 6 over <coughs> 2 minus 9, and that's obviously not going to equal 0. So this one does not work. So at p, y is going to equal 2, and that's the only value. So this is our answer for part b. <coughs> So I'm going to be continuing with part C, which says find the value of the second derivative at point P, which we found in part B, and it's asking does the curve have a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither at this point. So let's start by writing the equation for the derivative, which is dy over dx is equal to 3y minus 2x over 8y minus 3x. And I'm also going to write the values of the point P, which is 3, 2. And at that point, the first derivative is equal to 0, so I'm also going to write that. Okay, so we're going to save this information for a little bit later in the problem. That just helps us to figure out all the information we have. So let's go back to this and find the second derivative. So we're going to have to use the quotient rule along with implicit differentiation. So <clears throat> low d high, so 8y minus 3x times the derivative of the upper function, so that's 3 times dy dx minus 2 minus hi, so 3y minus 2x times the derivative of the lower function, which is 8dy dx minus 3, all over the lower function squared. So 8y minus 3x squared. So now that we have the derivative, we found the derivative of the first derivative, so we found the second derivative, we can go ahead and plug in all these values to find the value of the second derivative at p. So x is 3, y is 2, and dy dx is 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plug all those in. Okay, so now that we have all them plugged in, we can do the calculations, which are pretty easy, and simplify the equation. So 8 times 2 is 16 minus 3 times 3, which is 9, just multiplied by 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. 
And then the second one, we have 6 minus 6, which is 0, as you know. So this whole part, since this is 0, this whole part ends up being canceled out. So we'll just skip a step right there. And the bottom part ends up being 16 minus 9 squared. So let's continue to simplify, and we'll get <clears throat> negative 14 over 49. And that's going to simplify to negative 2 over 7. So now that we found the value of the second derivative, which is this, so I'm going to write that so we don't forget what this one is. So it's negative 2 over 7. So using the second derivative test, or I guess the second derivative rule, we can conclude that this curve has a local maximum at p because the second derivative is negative and the first derivative is 0. So we can just write that down and we'll be done. And that is how you solve the FRQ question from a 2004 AP calculus test.